Yo, 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 this is the Takeover Boss Talk comedian Jesse McDonald. And I'm here. And this is this is my takeover now. Yeah, we on Boss Talk one. Boss Talk has been taken yeah, over by talk, comedian Jesse McDonald to. today. We'll what we by, talking about? Me. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique house. It's your boy EC <laughs> on the road with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dad. Well, going. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, you name it, threads, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to go to, over to our YouTube channel. And not only subscribe, we want your subscription, but also we want your membership. Go ahead and sign up for our membership. How you do so is by going under any one of our videos and click the description section. And once you do that, you'll see a link that says sign up for our membership. Click that and follow all the instructions. And we thank you and we love you because y'all always say, how can we support the brand? That's how you can support the brand. Sign up for a membership. We love you and have a blessed day. Man, hey, man, this guy right here, y'all, you guys know him. He's been on the show multiple times, whether we was in Atlanta. Well, we started out here with us in Dallas. He used to live here. He moved away. This guy is hard to keep up with. Always on the move. Always working. Comedian Jesse McDonald. Yes, yes. So you know, I don't need no introduction. Jesse this is McDonald's the takeover, baby. Is I'm in back. the building. Yes, without the beard. Without mm -hmm. the beard. Grown man, man status. He just got a little beard. Yeah, little. yeah just, just a little bit. Just a little. Yeah, I could have done shave it all. You know, I was going to shave this morning. I said, nah, go with your, just go with you. <laughs> man, hey, man, it's, it's, it's live, man, to uh, be able to see your move, man, and just what keeps you going? Like, you've been going to every city. You always on the road. I seen your stand up now. I know what it's about. You know what I mean? You real yeah. dope at what you do. Like, what keeps you going? Man, the, see the, 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 to see the impact that I put on people, watching their faces once I come off stage and not knowing what a person going through, and to show people, hey, look, just because you're in a certain position or got a certain disability doesn't mean you can't do it. I show them, hey, look, I can do it, and try to hopefully motivate somebody else to do it. I got a question. So how many comedians with a disability are there? I don't know. I, I know it's Josh Blue. Okay. He got cerebral palsy. Uh, Charles Walden, one of my favorite, okay. out of Philly. And them the only two. Okay, because I've you know, never seen, you're nah, the only nah, person I've ever seen. It'd probably be some more, but I don't know if they, I don't know if they working like we're working. Yeah. Or working like I'm working. Some of them get to that point where they be like, I'm disabled and I don't, just, but I'm comfortable where I'm at. And you get some people that um, be like, they don't want to deal with the disabled people because it's a liability. If they come on That's my show and I they fall. I was wondering. I was but wondering why they don't get big because your they don't comedy, get big because your comedy is amazing. Your comedy is amazing, right? Your comedy. When I come oh, and yeah. see you, you make, and I'm not a person that people make laugh all the time, but you had me rolling the whole time. I was yes. shocked. Appreciate right? it. But so I'm like, you should be so much bigger. I you even said it to him. You should be a headliner. And I'm like, and, why and is coming. it that why is it that you haven't gotten to that stage? Is it because and I, I, the same thing what you just said? I'm like, is it because of the liability? They're scared that you might fall or you hurt yourself or just different things like that. Do you think that that can stop you from becoming that person? Mm. Sometimes, yeah, but at the same time, sometimes you gotta wait your turn. So, sometimes God say, Hey, look, it ain't your turn yet. Okay. I'm gonna put you in certain places to get you ready to when it's your turn, then you then it's your turn. Cause you look at it, I started off with Ali Sadiq. Mm -hmm. I moved from Ali Sadiq to Ricky Smiley. Mm -hmm. From Ricky Smiley, I was on the blues circuit. Then I went to the gospel circuit. Then I went back to the blues circuit. Then I linked with Kerwin Claiborne. Mm -hmm. From Kerwin Claiborne, I linked up with um Tim Bay. And then started linking up with other comedians, the Carlos Millers and stuff. But then it all came back. One of the biggest comedians I used to watch was LaVelle Crawford. Mm -hmm. Now I feature for LaVelle Crawford too now. Man. Awesome. So it's building. It's building. It's just being patient and waiting your turn and just know when it's your, when it's your turn, mm -hmm. you just be ready to go when you learn not to make the same mistakes that you made 
back then. You know, let me ask you this, though. Let's go all the way back to what you just said. Ali Sadiq. Like, I've been hearing this guy's name a lot lately. He's actually a friend of the show. I mean, mm-hmm. he's a cousin. A cousin of, of, of the a show. Friend, of, of, a of, a, of a friend. Like, like my barber. It's yes. his, this is his people. So, uh, Ali Sadiq, like, how did you guys first link up and what, how did you, because you say you went with him first. Like, yes, the how first person never gave me an opportunity. How did, how did you guys even end up linking up? Because you're from Arkansas. He's in Houston, right? Yeah, he came. He used to come to Arkansas every Monday night and host his comedy uh, Funny Mondays or whatever. And he was on stage one time and people was talking. And he said, y'all think it's easy to come up here and stand up in front of you and talk or whatever? He said, you know what? I'm going to give y'all an opportunity to come up here and let y'all see how it is. And if you ain't funny, I'm going to talk about you. A couple people went up there. They weren't funny. He talked about him. I said, give me a chance. One guy like, nah, don't let him up there. Ali said, nah, little handicapped dude ain't funny. I'm going to talk about his ass too. <laughs> I went up there and I just talked about stuff that I went through in real life. And it was funny. And they was like, wow, we're going to bring him to Memphis next week. And um, open up, Chestnut is the first person ever paid me for a show. Wow. And that was my second show. And it was with Ali? Yes. Wow. Wow, man. Just no doubt man and you never would have thought that that, that would have turned to that that night. You didn't know. You wouldn't. That, you just went up there by faith and said, I'm going to try. I, well, I was always funny. I used to <laughs> always talk about people. You can get the business. So it was it was always in me, but just to talk about my real life on stage, stuff that would hurt me, I can go on stage and talk about it, and you laugh at it, now I'm able to get over it because I didn't got it off my chest. Wow. Okay, that's good. But you're talking about God. It's a reason that you were there that night because you could have been anywhere else, but yeah, that's that I used opportunity. Yeah, I to be a pimp out here, boy. I was out here in these streets. <laughs> nah, nah, but yeah, it, it's, it's good. You know, sometimes you just got to step outside your box, and, mm-hmm. and people get so caught up in their own box to where they don't want to step out and try nothing new. And when you get to step out and try something new, then it's hard for you to grow. And you said it helps you when you make fun about the the things that you go through in life and, you know, your disability and stuff like that. It helps you? Yes. Okay, because, you know... Sometimes, like, where a girl can tell me no for trying to talk to her and she said it in such an ugly way. Then she turn around, I see the same girl in the crowd... Or when I say, can we go out? She'd be like, no. I'd be like, I bet you I can make you change your mind. Then I play the Yo Gotti, I got a chick. Then I'd be like, then I'd be like and I get to park up front for life. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's like, where, where you told me no, let me show you what you done missed out on. I'm guaranteed the income every at, at the first and the third of every month. Mm-hmm. No matter where I go, I can park up front. Regardless of what, a drug dealer, times slow down. Sometimes it gets dry. He can't go out there and hustle. I ain't got to get up and move. My check going to hit my bank anyway. Mm-hmm. A drug dealer or anybody else that take you somewhere, they ain't got to be a drug dealer. Just anybody else take you somewhere, they got to park in the back. I park directly in the front. If a handicapped spot ain't there, I can make a spot, mm-hmm. and they ain't going to mess with me. No, because um, so growing up, okay, before you got married and you met your wife, you did you used to have problems meeting girls? Uh, nah, did girls I, I, I used to always like turn you down because nah, of your disability? Well, I had problems meeting them. I I was always a ladies man. Okay. And when I when I say that, let me make it clear. I was always able to get along with the ladies. Right. I can get their numbers. I can go see them when other people would be scared to go over their house to see them. I go see them. I knock on the door. I ask their mama, their daddy, hey, look, I'm here to see such stuff. Because that if you can't get along with the mom and the dad, right. why are you going to go see her? Right. If I got to sneak to see you, I don't really want to be there. But I was a friend, but I never got no play no, like that, play. like boyfriend or girlfriend. And it's funny because I would always get the number, but my cousin them <laughs> or a friend be the ones that talk to him. I was like, but I'm the one that come and visit you. Right. you know, Did but you hate that as a kid growing up? Sometimes, but then, you know, as you grow up, you, you live and you learn maybe, hey, that wasn't the one that for me. That wasn't the one for you. Yeah. I like that. So, but and another thing too, okay, just like you said, being disabled, you get a check every month. Okay, getting as big as you are and getting paid, does that affect that? Because um, you have a lot of people who be getting them disability well, checks and say, I can't go work because if I go work, they take away my disability. But see, this is the thing with me. I'm not comfortable with that disability check, so they can take it. I'm able to work, 
I'm able to grind. I love to check. I love to have the check. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to get comfortable with sitting on disability. And it's crazy because when when people give you disability checks, they say, oh, you can't work here. Right. Or you can't make this much money. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying, you can't stay in these type of houses. You got to stay in these type of places. Poverty and and the, places, mm -hmm. the places they want you to stay it is low poverty is right. is like they don't come and take care of the handicap um um places where they live and and make sure it's nice smelling good or anything sometimes you walk in there sometimes it smell like pee and other mm. stuff so that ain't my living i i want to live better and long as i always say i want to live better i'm going to continue to do better and hustle that's so true because I was looking at um, a reel on Instagram today and it talked about the power of the tongue and how much we talk about, you know, some people, even with money, they'll be like, oh, I'm broke because they don't want nobody to ask them for money. But there's power in the tongue. You should never speak certain things into the atmosphere that you don't want. So just like what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't want to live there. So you're not going to say that. You nah, know what nah, I mean? I, nah, I stayed there before. Yeah, because I, I needed somewhere to stay. And I don't, one thing, one of my friends, KB, uh, Kevin Bryant out of Little Rock, Arkansas, always told me, he said, if you're grown, you need to have your own. Mm. No grown man want to stay with another grown man. Mm -hmm. So when when he said that, you know, we used to hang around other people and uh, people that used to hang around us, he used to say certain stuff. And the first thing he said, nigga, I'm grown. He said, well, you grown, get your own. <laughs> I like where, that. Where yours at? I ain't put that on the shirt. Since, if you grown, get your own. Yeah, and so when he when he said that, you know, that just opened my eyes. Right. And ever since then, I, I always want to have my own place. And when I have my own place, I always try to hustle to make sure that my bills are paid, whether I was selling dogs or whatever I had to do so to make me, that income. So tell me about when you met your wife for the first time. Because we're talking about girls. So when you met your wife for the first time, how did you yeah. know she was the one? And, how you know, what did you do for her to, you know, to get over that threshold? Oh, when I first met her, we was at a daddy birthday party. Mm -hmm. We was at, I think it was a daddy, yeah, it was, I think a daddy birthday party. She was dancing, and I asked my uncle, I said, "Who is that?" And he said, "Oh, that's Tiny." I like, well, introduce me, hook me up with her. And when her, it's like when she gave me her number, we conversated. I would go visit, and I knew I started getting in good when I would go over there, and I would get away over there. And I would stay over there till her daddy get off work at three, four o'clock in the morning. Mm. And he would take me home afterwards oh. or whatever. And then it got to the point where she had got a vehicle and we moved in together and she would come and visit me. And she just never seen a disability. She seen me. That's awesome. And that, that love that we had 21 years ago, 21 years later, we got married. Awesome. Awesome. And I told her I never... Regardless of what we went through, I never stopped loving her, and and I always said to myself, even no matter who I was with, if she ever came back and gave me a chance, I would do it. Mm. And there was no disrespect to the other girls that I used to talk to. You know, some of them, I think they just talked to me just because it felt good. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. But with her, you really felt the genuine love and she will tell you how she feel, and it she don't care. She hurt your feelings, but it only you made me you it only made me life. a stronger man. And for somebody to accept you, you know what I'm saying? Because of you, and our family accepted me. You know, you don't find too many people where you get along with their family, and their family right. get along with yours. When we broke up, she was still visiting my family. I was still visiting her family. Mm. So when we did get back together. It was like a beat that never miss. Sometimes I always say, sometimes, not all relationships, but some relationships, you need to break up so that you can see what you really miss. You know what I mean? Because sometimes when you together all the time, people take each other for granted. They don't realize really what you have till you, you know, you separate yeah. like, man, this person does all this stuff for me. This person is always there for me. They're always yeah. telling me the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people, sometimes people got to realize things some people say, well, my wife don't do this, do this, or she don't do this. But sometimes you got to look at it. What about the things that you don't do that she don't like? Exactly. And the things that she do or he do, does it outweigh the things that they don't do? Mm -hmm. And the things that they don't do, is it something that y'all could talk about and get over it? And me and my wife, we had that conversation, and we was like, look, I'd rather have the package and have something missing than not mm -hmm. have a package. 
with everything missing. But you had to grow into that because you didn't have that mentality at first. No, I didn't. It and it took her her brother talking to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I I think he younger than me, mm-hmm. but he act older than me, or whatever. But just listening at at him talk to me sometimes through relationships. I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it. The women I dated were strippers and hoes. Okay. Dating strippers and hoes because that's all I could get at the time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I thought I could get at the time. Right. So when I broke up with her, that's all I was dating. Mm -hmm. So when you date them, their lifestyle is different Different. to over when you come back to a woman. Mm -hmm. When you're dating a woman, everything is different. Right. Because now your your whole body change, your demeanor change, and it's like the stuff that you would do with the hoes and the strippers, you can't do that when you're with your wife. With your wife. So exactly. having to adapt and he was able to talk me through it because that was my first my first girlfriend ever. Mm. So dating my first girlfriend ever, coming back to her being my wife, mm-hmm. now it's like, hey, look, you can't treat her the same way that you would treat the other ones or go to the same places that you would take some of these girls. Right. So. Man. I, I love your work ethic. I love the way how, you know, you elevated from doing just comedy and now you're into the movies. Yes. Hole in the wall. Did y'all? Yeah, yeah, we, we haven't gotten into we that get yet. Into the, I want to. Yeah. I think. But that's not the first movie he been but, in. No. I want to. That's the new one that, that's out now. Yeah, so we want to talk about that and, and just I, be excited it's, with it's him for two, it. Two of them out now. Yeah. And departments. Departments. Right. Departments with T.I. Right. Yes, yeah. I don't have no speaking role, but tip. Thank <laughs> you. Because I went and they say, look, we're going to have you as an extra. And me as an extra, they say, what can you do to stand out in the movie? You gonna stand out so regardless. So when, when they set me down, they say, look, the strippers right here, we're gonna give you the money. All you gotta do is tip. So I'm like, that's all I'm gonna do? I'm like, no, I'll do something to make it, to make sure my scene is seen. So I put the dollars on top of my crutch and I was holding the crutch over to the girl, tipping her like that, <laughs> like I couldn't get up. <laughs> and Tip said, man, hey, look, we got to put that in the movie. So thank Dang. you. Even though I didn't have no, no speaking role, just the role that I did played a big part, and he gave me the opportunity, and I thank him for it. You wow. know, because he didn't have to have me in there like that. Right. So. How was the energy, like, on set, like, with you guys, when you seen everybody just being in that crowd when you were doing your part? It's It was good because everybody pretty much knew me. A lot of people I didn't even know, and no disrespect to them, but they knew me in the love that they showed me or whatever. They said, man, you the hardest disabled working comedian I know. And some Ronnie Jordan always tell people, man, you let him on your show, he coming with a whole swap meet Mm because he got T-shirts, cups, keychains, everything, whatever you want, he's selling. But, you know, I mean, they always tell me merch, Merch pays the bills. Mm-hmm. Comedy shows pay you, but merch pays the bills. Wow. Um, when you think about just the, the, the movie, like to be on in a movie, uh, T.I.N. and from the takers all the way to to now being a, a rap star, you know what I mean, to even now being in the comedy, like um, ha, have you been by his uh, establishment down in Atlanta? Yes, yes. You, yes. You, they got a stage and everything for stand up in there? Yes. Do, have you performed there? Yep. Oh, you killed uh, that. I, 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 I done seen you. I, I know you get I down. Love, I love the energy, and man. One thing people don't know, just because you go to places sometimes doesn't mean you have to hit the stage. Doesn't mean you have to be the spotlight. Sometimes you can be the spotlight from the back. Wow. You can, you can, you know, like, every time I, when they were shooting apartments, a lot of times I wasn't even in certain scenes, but I would go. And when I go, I always make sure I, I speak the tip. I make sure I speak to everybody on the cast, you know, and just being there to show that support and and being there to where when I went to his um his um the cafe, trap cafe, a girl was sitting down and she had an extra seat. She said, You need a seat. T I walked by and said, Jesse don't need no seat. Man, he don't need no seat. He good. And when he said, This is my man, this is my partner, Jesse telling you good. I'm like, Yeah, I'm good. And I was like, that that made my day for T.I. to walk by and be like, man, just don't need no seat. That's my partner. Even though he said I didn't need no seat, I really did. But just, <laughs> but just for him to acknowledge me, you know what I'm saying, without me saying nothing to him, let me know, hey, look, I've been working and my hard work and grinding is paying off. Wow, man. Like, uh, have you seen his stand-up? Yes. How is, how's T.I. stand-up? 
uh, when you see him. I know you being uh, I you the OG him. now. I done watched him grow. Oh, that's I done watched him. I done watched him grow, and he's getting better within time. Nobody starts off good. You know what I'm saying? No, nobody rapper, whatever you do, nobody starts off good. But long as you continue to do what you're doing, you're gonna grow. Wow, you're gonna grow. And people, the first thing people say, oh, he ain't funny. He ain't funny. I'm pretty sure people thought I wasn't funny back in the day. But I never let it stop me. And T.I. never let it stop him. No. And one thing somebody told me, they say, T.I. really don't do it for the comedy. T.I. do it to help the comedians. They say he do it because some comedians are not getting paid what they're worth. He said, well, look, I got the platform and I got the following. Shoot, they're going to come and see me. Let me get out here and I'll do it. And the comedians that he got with him help him. And they embrace him, and he take them on the road, and he make sure they're good. So I appreciate him. I'm trying to be a part of that team, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, and and work with him as much as possible. But you know, I in the future I could see me being that big person. I, I seen I met uh, K Dub yesterday. He looks so familiar, cause probably cause he always been on TV and always been around in these different sets. Like you, you familiar with K Dub, right? Yeah, K Dub. I used to me K Dub, Ali Sadiq. We all used to. Oh, you was there too. Back in the day. Okay, okay. So, and how how is K Dub? Like he's he's one that's been around forever. Yes, K K Dub did did a lot of writing. Um, K Dub K Dub is a legend to me. K-Dub why why do you say that? Because I watched K Dub when when I first started out. K Dub was already that man. Okay. And I always stayed in contact with no matter when I call K Dub, yeah, what you want look ugly ass dude? What what you want? Get off my phone, little stinky breath ass dude. You know, and he always crack his joke. K Dub never changed. K Dub back then, all the way now. And, and he always he always support me. He said, Man, I said, How do I get to where you at? He said, Don't give up. Wow. That's don't that, give up. that's the best advice he he can give me. Don't give up. Keep doing what you're doing. Whatever got you whatever got you here, it's gonna get you there. You know what I'm saying? Just don't give up. You just gotta keep pushing. Wow, man! I I just think that's that that's live, man. That you got this 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 history, uh, the long history with all of the different comedian world. Now, the, from comedian to movies to just all type of things that you're dealing with, man. You blessed to be done, you know, set in that limelight. Now let's let's get into uh, the hole in the wall. Like, yes. how did you end up even on that set? Um, I was on the road with look. No, out on the road with D-Ray. Okay, did, shout out D-Ray, yeah, man. D- I came yeah. to see you when you was on the stage. That's the yeah. first time I seen you was with D-Ray, and I came and you showed me so much love in Atlanta. Yeah, man, D-Ray, man. D-Ray like a big brother. It's funny because I, I text D-Ray sometimes, be like, hey, how you doing? Um, How's your health? <laughs> Went to a show, he said, man, I don't even know how to accept it, man. Another man asked me how I'm doing, how's my health? He said, man, I got. I don't know how to accept it, but thank you wow. because nobody never asked their mm-hmm. friends how to help. You know what I'm saying? Or even when I talk to Tip, uh, one time I say, "Look, when I call you, I don't call you to want nothing. I just call to see how you're doing. When I call D Ray, I just call sometimes to see how you're doing because we're friends. And if we're friends, friends check on each other. I don't want nothing to happen to none of my comedian friends or anybody I work with." And I say, but they my friends, but I never call and say, hey, how you doing? Hey, what you got going? Man, I just call to check on you. How the family? If we're friends, we're friends. That's all right. You know, so. Man, I thank God for putting you in my life. me eight man. years. I mean, seven years. Yeah. And still, and still going. So this movie, is it? Is it something that, is he the headline on? Is he the main the, character? No, but, uh, um. The head, the, the main person on this one is... Wait a minute. I, now, see, if I wasn't trying to think his name, um, Baby Drew. Baby, Baby Drew. Drew. Yeah, Baby Drew out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. That, oh, he, yeah, he, and Milwaukee is, listen, man, I interviewed Jamal Woolard, and he is, listen, he be on Tubi a lot. Like, yes. like he working his butt off. And, and to be honest with you, to see y'all all on that cast together, like how was it like even working with these guys versus show, working with T.I. Yeah, and them on, a, on the apartments? It's a comedy show the whole time. Oh, it's a comedy <laughs> show. comedy show the whole time. We we joning on each other. We, 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 we bringing it. We shooting. We're not on set shooting content. We're taking that that opportunity to work with other comedians. And say, hey, look, let's shoot this video. What you got? All right, we're gonna shoot this. All right, when you get done with that, hey, I want to shoot this with you. And we we were shooting. You know what I'm saying? That's shooting hard. Content. You know, we we're working and we're working. 
Man, I think that's that's dope, man. That's live. That that basically you find you know finding those opportunities and those opportunities open up for you. I know it's God. It's only God that you would be able to keep that work going like that. Yeah, because the thing is, the door's been open. I just never walked through them. I didn't understand it. The doors, the doors that been open. A lot of people are like, what you mean by that? Well, back in the day, people used to tell me, "Just come, I got you. Just come, I got you." But me, at that time, I didn't realize what it meant. And I felt like I didn't have the money to get there. Or where am I going to stay if I get there? You know what I'm saying? So I went to church. And the preacher said, man, we're scared to step out on faith. That's we got, we, we're scared of failure. You know what I'm saying? But who's to say you're going to fail? we just scared of failure. Sometimes you got to fail. And some people have to fail in order to get better. Some people don't. But... It was like, skip, step out on faith. And he was like, when he said that, it's like, people said, come. I just took the opportunity to get up and just go. Man, I get it, man, because you got to have faith, man. Faith, you know, faith is is, is the start of everything. You yeah, know what I mean? People, when people see you going and trying to help yourself, they don't mind helping you. What? But if you don't step out and try to help yourself, you know, then why should I help you? Wow. I, I just, I, like I said, you ever been to New York? Yes. I did the Laughaholics. Shout out to Ray G. What Young. year was that? Oh, ooh, that's been about three, about, about, my son five, so about five, five, yeah, about five years ago. Five years Four, ago. But that, okay, and you wasn't, six, five years who was ago. with you? Um, My daughter's mom at the time. Okay, and did you, were you ever apart from her while you was there? Nah. Okay, because you need to be careful in New York. Cause they was they've been getting people. They got P Diddy. You know what I'm saying for uh you know that, some old stuff that happened. And yeah. I'm just trying to see how you fell in this category. Cause all you niggas going up to New York and uh uh um, hanging out and partying and doing stuff that nobody think nobody know about. It comes back years later, and they just stop letting people come back with the charges from long time ago. So well, see, they should did that with Bill Cosby and R. <laughs> Kelly. Free R. Kelly. <laughs> Bump and grind shoes. I, I'm still singing Sex Me. <laughs> Shoot. So did you, I mean, do you see what's going on? And how does that affect you mentally? Like when you see these people, you know, having to go back through these situations because of past relationships that wasn't right? Well, the thing is, if it happened then, you should have said something then. Why wait so many years? Some women are hurt, uh, uh, Jesse. You weren't hurt when you were busting them windows? You weren't hurt when you were getting that money? I get it, but, yeah, but I, I'm telling you, look, some look, of these women, don't, they don't know how to open up about it uh, just you, when it's happening. You open up when you tell your homegirl he cheated on me. Yeah. I got to you know agree with saying? you on that. You, you, open up for you, you, you open up to what you want to open up to. That's wow. what it is. Like, why if you if you got hurt, if you got hurt and you could do something about it, why hold it in? Because when you hold it in, it's somebody else going through that same situation right then. But you you scared to speak up to to help them because you say, hey, look, I got hurt. This happened to me, but this is how I overcame it. But when you hold it in, guess what? It's somebody else right up under you, right close to you, going through the same thing. And they're, and they're steady beating them up. And then sometimes it beat them up to the bad to where it kills them. But you could have stopped it by saying, hey, look, this is what I did. Wow. I, I just look at it because uh, you some see. Some people see money. That's it, what they see. Yeah, I just seen, I seen another clip of. I ain't going to uh, say they wrong or I ain't going to say they right. But, you know. Well, they got Jimmy Iovine and they got, uh, it's, it's Jamie Foxx mm -hmm. too. Shout out to Jamie, man. They, it's a lot of charges coming back on these brothers, man. And, and, this, and, uh, and, these, and these charges are serious and they trying to get them back up to New York to prosecute them. This stuff been going on. This stuff been going. You think about it. it where, where, where did it first start off at? Bill Cosby. Yeah. You think about it. If if Bill Cosby hadn't went through what he went through and all these women started popping up, do you think R. Kelly would have popped up like that? Do you think, you know what I'm saying, Diddy would have popped up like that? I'm not saying that, I'm not saying what they did was right. If they did it, I'm not blaming nobody. But you got to look at it, man. People are bringing stuff up. That's just like right now. If you if you in kindergarten and you get a whooping when you were small in class, your mama coming there and whoop your butt in front of everybody. When you get in 12th grade, what they say? Remember that time your mama came whoop you in front of everybody in kindergarten? 
You know what I'm saying? No matter what that that goes with you, but we don't we don't go back and say, My mama beat me in kindergarten in front of everybody. I need to sue her. Yeah, I, I feel so, you. I, I feel you. It, it's just it's, it's it's something else because you know I feel a like lot of guys going through it. The, a lot of the, women going through it. A lot it. of these women are giving it to these guys because they want that stardom. They want that fame. When you go when you go to some of these people and you go hang out with them, you already know what it's about. A woman already knows she's going to give you something before she even leave with you. Some of these women already say, man, i give it to him. He can get it. But then when you get it to him, he get it, and you get you get caught up by your boyfriend or your your mama or your daddy or somebody. Now, you already said you were going to give it to him. Now that you gave it to him, you got caught up. What happened? Oh, he raped me. He forced me to do it. Man. That's so that's when... I had to be careful because when I when I was doing the pimp game. Oh, and, wait a minute I, now. When I, when I did that, I learned a lot. That's when you used to be a pimp? Yeah, yeah. Bonafide. Now, bonafide, certified. <laughs> but the thing is, you learn from it. But like that's when I would tell girls, never when a guy comes say, I got I got some weed, let's smoke. No, cause the if I if he smoke with you, then you're cheaper. Because all I got to do is say, let's get high. I get you high. If the weed is good enough, you're going to keep coming back to me. And eventually, I'm going to get it. I tell the girl, you tell them, no, pay me. I buy my own weed. Wow. Man. No, the, and, that, and that's it. And when I, even with me going out on the road, you know what I'm saying, women are different. And women or guys are working together. They think, oh, the handicapped dude, oh, we, that's an easy target. We can get some money out of him. Hey, look, I need you to go talk to him. Try to go to his room. When you go to his room, you can text me, let me know what room number you in. You can say, hey, look, I'm going to go get some ice. I'm going to run downstairs to the snack bar and grab me something. You want something? But who to say she's not texting him saying, hey, look, I'm at this door. You know what I'm saying? She go out the door, and when she go out the door, she leave. But you know she ain't got no key. So when you hear that, you go back and open the door. It's a guy with a gun right there in your face. That's real. So you're not thinking because I don't think you see this pretty woman. Or she said, hey, look, I'm going I'm to invite my homegirl up here. She can FaceTime a beautiful girl. Yeah, she FaceTime that beautiful girl, tell her to come up there, but who's on the side of her? That You think that beautiful girl coming, but it's a dude right there. It's a dude right so there. So that's when I was like, no. I'm like, where are you going when you leave here? I'm headed home. Let me I'm ask you this. My wife. I want to I I ask question. some uh, questions about social media, and then I'll let you get Is this about relationship? A um, little bit. Not really. Okay, I want to ask you about social media. Dame Dash has been been doing a lot of lot of. Uh, he has a new app that he's doing, and I I, I can't think of the name of. Look, it. B- before you go into that, because I say one thing. Yeah. You know, little Tony that stay up the street. Little Tony been messing with these girls for a long time. Oh, he back on it. He, he been knocking girls down and and running them up and down the road. Nobody little Tony says, ain't got no money. No, nobody says nothing about little Tony. You know what I'm saying. So that I just want to put that well, in there. That's real. If you're gonna bring out the big guys, hit the small guys too, because it it didn't, it didn't just start with the black guys, because white guys are doing it too, and other guys. So, if you but wanna, you don't know if they're hitting the small guys because it's just his name is not yeah, as big yeah. as big guys, so you're not seeing it pass it all over the news. So they yeah. might be hitting the small guys too. Oh, no, they're not hitting the small guys. Man, nobody, nobody wants. They say, "Who gonna watch Little Tony on TV talking about he hit all these girls?" Little Tony got twelve kids. Man, he probably got twenty some kids, <laughs> but it don't matter because wow. he's not in the limelight. Now, what you were saying? I was just asking about Dame Dash. Is he 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 brought up a, a a scenario about YouTube and the CPMs and and the fact that when they pay us, they pay us, and you know they run ads, and we get like a uh, Say a dollar. This is on eighty five South Show. I just watched it. It's like mm-hmm. they get twenty dollars. He says digital slavery the way that they're 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 doing us. He's saying that basically you get a dollar and they get you don't know they don't tell you how much you're getting really. Yes. He says that this is like digital slavery. So he came up with an app and he's basically shopping it around. It's free. You get on mm-hmm. it for free. He know how to deal with running ads. He got people that's buying ads. He say right now he's small in it. And twenty years, ten years from now, he he, he compared himself to Steve Jobs because Steve Jobs started with IBM and then he came ten years later with Apple and got that mm-hmm. respect eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, he just see, says there's a path where you should be pretty much uh, uh, putting yourself in a situation where you can get it paid. You know, uh, at least ninety five hundred percent of of the ad revenue. 
because you think about it, social media, the internet is ran by us. We're, without our content and the, the things that we do on, no matter what you do, without your content, people can't put ads on, on your content. So I feel like if you're going to put an ad in my content, you should ask me how much do I want to run that ad in my content. Mm -hmm. Because we, we get a million, say well, we get a million views. Now you can stuck all these ads in my comment. I mean, in my thing, but Content. how? Mm -hmm. But how much? How much are you gonna pay me out of these million views mm. for these ads? So I think they should ask us. Hey, look, we want to run these ads in your um in your videos or whatever you're doing. We want to run these ads. How much you gonna charge me to put it in there? Mm -hmm. Because you put it in there for free, but you're charging them. An arm and a leg. Right. Sometimes, sometimes it ain't even an arm and a leg. Ten dollars or five dollars may not sound like a lot, but when you have somebody running 40, 50 ads, you know what I'm saying, or you know what I'm saying, so many ads at ten dollars. Look at the money. So you agree with Dame that they're they're abusing the system and pretty much manipulating it. Yes. Because they feel like because you, but it's it, it is their platform. You are yeah. you you're subjecting yourself to their platform. You, you're, you're opening right. up to it. You're signing up for it when you want when you go punch yourself in. I'm gonna yeah. be on YouTube. You're yes. agreeing to the terms that they've now set. That that you you're right. <laughs> that's the that's the problem where they say you don't read the fine print. fine print. You don't read the fine print. So, you know, but even with reading the fine print, you think about it. Before they was paying us, before they was paying us. We was out here. We was doing it. We was we were growing your platform. Now that we didn't grow your platform, if we're making great content to keep your platform up and running, you're making millions. What do you think? About and that stuff? I, gotta you I think you should you should um, ask us about the ad. You're going to run ads in our videos. You should ask us. Mm -hmm. Wow. But I have a question. So. Um, you jumped in, so I forgot what my question was. From early? Yes. Wow. We're going to cut that part out. I know what you're going to ask me. you about to ask me before I leave here oh. today how much. <laughs> How, how much do I want, 10 or $100? <laughs> I say, you know what, two zeros behind a one always sound better. You know, I just remember what I wanted. Um, okay, because you do comedy, so you're always out at night um, at the different shows and stuff like that. So you see some of these people who be getting drunk. Um, mm -hmm. And wasted because I've heard people say that sometimes when they're walking past you, like you set up your table and stuff like that, you can know that they're drunk when they're leaving the venues, right? Mm -hmm. um, what you say about people getting so wasted and then going into their cars to drive to their destinations? Mm -hmm. I, I think you should have a designated driver anytime. My, my, I'm my wife designated driver. Mm -hmm. my, my wife don't, she don't get drunk like that. But when she drink, I, I'm a driver. But if she, if I'm not there, she say, hey, "Look, I know, I know what's my limit." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And some people don't know their limits; they're just drinking. Right. You know what I'm saying? Some people, some people, I'd say some people drive better when they drunk. I've heard that. You know what I'm saying? I've heard that. But you know, I don't, I don't advise nobody. But some to people drink have an addiction, so I don't, I don't advise nobody to drink and drive because that's an innocent bystander somewhere. Yeah. And you don't want to kill them or hurt them or hurt yourself. Because, you know, thank God there was no fatality, but I saw where um, Two Chains was in a wreck last night. Well, this morning at two something in the morning, um, it was a drunk driver who had hit him from behind, but it was three cars who was ended up in this wreck. And luckily, he only, you know, had like a neck and you know some bruises but it wasn't that bad for him but then somebody else was um airlifted to the hospital so Man, it's this. just it's, when i see stuff like that it's crazy because he was in a um a drunk driving accident he was uh, one day we was dri he was driving down the road with his daughter in the car and do you believe a drunk driver coming and end up on his side of the road like playing chicken with him so to say wow. hit him the car, you should have seen the truck. He was in the truck. The truck was terrible. And the guy was in the Mercedes Benz the convertible. The guy came out of the car, looked on his car, jumped back in his car, and tried to drive off. Drunk. Oh, wow. Yeah. People I had remember, to drive I was in the wreck one time. I was in the wreck one time. I hit somebody. I got out. I said, oh, he's drunk. I said, no, I just walked this way. <laughs> 
<laughs> so silly. But no, I don't. I don't think. I, that's right. I don't drink. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't like the feeling. You know, I'm. I got that natural feeling. They don't you understand know. that they're taking other people's life in their hands when they go behind the wheel to go, you know, do something crazy like that. Yeah. That's right. I mean, I, I run to a lot of people now. They say the best thing to do is drink at home. Exactly. Drink, smoke at home. The same meat that they playing in the club, you can hear it at home. Half the people that's in the club, you don't like anyway. Exactly. So, you know. You or you go there really so often, you, go, you see you them go, every night you anyway. You're going there to show off your outfit that you just bought for $7. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or guys go there just to say, hey, look, I bought, you remember Lil, Lil Bad Keisha or whatever? Mm -hmm. I, bought, I bought all her friends some drinks, you know. Uh, or try to pick uh, up a girl to take her home. Yeah, that too. And women women are going there to be picked up and took home. Mm -hmm. That's that's rain to so many people in the, in the position that they're in now. That's true. Wow. I just, you know, when I, when I look at, you know, the whole limelight of, you know, going out there, bringing it on the stage, you know, getting booed, maybe, maybe getting out, no, not booed, but they bombing on stage. That's working. You know, like, like That's working. all of this stuff that you guys are up against out there. What's the worst uh, hackling that you ever had gotten? Oh, I ain't had no heckler. I, mean, I, 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 I ain't had no worse ones. I'd had some people come at me, but this ain't this ain't the, this ain't the problems that they wanted. I shut them down quick. I already got my gun loaded, and and I got another clip loaded of jokes that I, I already know what I'm gonna say to you before you even say it. So so when you say it, you better have a quick comeback. Cause soon you say something, I already bow. I'm shooting right back. Come on, keep going, cause I got another one. And if you ain't funny, I, I'm going to keep loading. Every time. Every time. I already know exactly what I'm going to say. And I'm going to hit you deep. Wow. Man, uh, so, uh, you know, I ain't going to lie to you, man. I always enjoy when you come on the show, man. You guys just performed here. Uh, y'all performing here tonight. Yes. Yeah. What, what, where y'all at tonight? We're at the Love Lounge. At the Love Lounge. Yeah, I'm at the Love Lounge with Curl and Claiborne tonight. Man, Where's that should that? be. Where's that? Where's the Love Lounge? It's in Arlington. Oh, okay. So, ladies, don't come trying to get no love from me tonight because I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah. thank you for coming yeah. on the show, yeah. man. Tell yeah. us where we can, uh, where, how we can get a hold of you. On Cash App. <laughs> <laughs> That's him, <laughs> man. You can get me on Cash man, App. Man, shout out to Myron yeah. Yeah. and his yeah. son, too. Let's shout yeah. them out yeah. because yeah. they doing their thing together can now. I haven't Myron? seen you yeah. on there with, uh, with uh, uh, Myron. He, he calls us a Myron Jewel. Myron Jewels. Jewels now. He's he a grown man now. He yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. as Myron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's still, he's still, he's still, he's still I was about to say he bring him out every now and he's again. Still, that he's still, still cheating at Myron, but you know he he grown up. He Myron Jewels. Actually, Myron was in the movie too, The Hole in the Wall. I, I had I, yeah he the, was. The, the strip they sent me. I learned my strip, but when I got on set, the strip that they gave me wasn't the strip that I read. Yeah. but the improv of it was so good. So I got a couple of movies on um, Live and in Color. Wow. Um, that's that's I think that's getting ready to come out. Um, Finding Love. Um, it's called Life. Um, Departments is out now. Um, what else? The Hole in the Wall is out now. Amazon Prime on Tubi. Shout out to all the people that made that movie happy. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. And anybody else need me, you need to get me. Cause I'm, I'm telling you, I'm on my way up, and I'm finna, I'm finna be that, I'm finna be that guy. Man, um, man, thank Put you. Put me in a movie. Hey, hey, we got cameras, so we we, yeah, we yeah. definitely might it, do one ourselves. If they, if they don't do the movie, I got the TV show already written. I, I got five episodes written. TV show, no cursing, family show, funny, with good good people that, and that my actors are people that I see that fit the role and plays them. I just got to get it in. Give in somebody a spotlight, uh, one of the new and upcoming comedians that you like, that you see, and that you like, man, this kid, he's he's going to be special. ISO. ISO, shout Comedi out to ISO. Comedian ISO out of Cincinnati. Man, ISO, man, that's, man, ISO is so funny. He, he funny in his own way. Because <laughs> he'll come up to me, he said, Jay, I got a new bit. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? And he said, hey, so a man gets in the car and drives down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just his delivery, but he's so determined and he's he got that he his he always pushing to do it. If I said I so and hey, look, I need you to come down to Dallas tomorrow or later on today and I need I got an interview for you for boss talk. He gonna get on a plane, he gonna show up. 
he he he's that guy. Wow. He he and he's he he's working. He said, "Man, I lost my whole bit book with all my jokes." I said, "God, we're trying to tell you that was garbage. He wants you to start over." <laughs> Shout out to ISO, man. Thank well, he, you. He laughed at it, but I, I was just telling him, you know what I'm saying, when you lose something, that's just God saying, I got something better for you. It's something better that you can do. Get rid of it. All the good stuff you'll remember. If it ain't good, don't worry about it. I got something else for you. So, man. Comedian ISO. A comedian ISO. Yeah. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, Jesse. You our guy, you man. Like, we we ain't playing about Jesse, right, babe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank but you. I, I'm on all social medias. Appreciate it. I'm on all social medias. Comedian Jesse, Jesse McDonald. Jesse McDonald. Com- and it, you know what? I, I'm so I'm so out here. I put my phone number on everything. That's hard. I, I like my, it. The reason, Mike the reason, Jones. The, re- the reason I, I learned from him, Mike Jones, <laughs> he used to put his number he say Everything. his number all the time. Two eight one three three oh eight eight zero zero four. Yeah, yeah, I think he still got that number. Yeah, yeah, that's but my the, guy. But the thing is when I put my number on everything, when you can't get me, I mean, when you can't find me on social media, you see that number, you call me like, hey, this is Jesse, yeah, this is me. How you doing? Some people just call me just to see how I'm doing. Some people just call to see if it's my number. Yes, that's my real number. And, you know, you never know who you touch and who, who just them to say, hey, look, I talked to Jesse McDonald. What's the number? 501-442-8674. Man, check it, man. Jesse I sound like my dog, dog. Yeah, you ain't just like it. 5 one 8674 Hey, man. I ain't got the zero zero in it, but I got the 8674 Oh, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love thank you. you. Love it's you. been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we That are. way.